Hey there guys and welcome back to another one of my Doctor Who book reviews and today in this book review I'm going to be reviewing a Terence Dix novel and that is Blood Harvest. Now this isn't the first Terence Dick uh, Virgin New Adventure which I have reviewed. Um, I have actually reviewed uh, Shakedown which was the uh, reprinted version so if you want to check out um, that review, uh, you know, feel free. Um, I'll leave a link in the description if I remember to do that. Um, so yes, let's uh, crack on with the re re uh, review by taking a look at the uh, cover art of uh, Blood Harvest. Now for a little bit of uh, trivia, um, I'm actually part of a Facebook uh, group called, um, I think it's called uh, the Doctor Who Book Audio and Comic Book Group or something like that. And um, I mentioned to that group that I was reading um, Blood Harvest and I showed them the picture of the front cover or whatnot. And uh, somebody actually pointed out that the inspiration for this cover came from one of the uh, Alien movies I believe. I think it was uh, to be specific uh, Alien 3. Um, one of the spaceship corridors and uh, it's uh, pretty much t a photograph just painted and put on the front cover of, front cover of this. Um, so that was quite nice and uh, I believe this uh, particular scene on the front cover um, actually features very early on in the book um, so I could see the picture on the front cover whilst I was reading that particular scene. So yeah, that's quite interesting uh, for anyone who's interested in cover design or whatnot. Um, so you've got Bernice and you've got one of the vampires on the front cover. Um, so it's quite nice, quite striking. Uh, you've got Doctor Who, uh, The New Adventures, uh, Blood Harvest, written by Terrence Dix. Um, the Spine, uh, mine copy's quite battered because I did find it in a charity shop for about three quid, so um, that's pretty cool, a lot, as well as some other Target books, so that was nice. Um, so you've got Blood Harvest, Terrence Dix, uh, this one's quite pink, and you've got The Blurb, uh, The New Adventures, and... Um, a little bit about the Virgin New Adventures themselves and a little bit about Terence Dick. So I'll read you the blurb. And the blurb is Docs peddling bootleg liqueur in an, in an illegal speaker sea. You're carrying a gun for your mace, which makes you no better than any other gun mole. And so here is the uh, blurb. That's a little quote from the story, by the way. Um, Decker is a private eye, an honest one, but when Al Capone hires him to investigate a new joint called Docs, he knows there is one job he can't refuse. And just why are the Doctor and Day selling illegal booze in a town full of murderous gangsters? Meanwhile, Bernice has been abandoned in a vampire-infested planet outside normal space. There, she meets a mysterious stranger called uh, Romana de Vertrulunda. Um, I'm just going to say Romana because Romana is uh, featured in this novel. And, uh, and discovers an ancient and malevolent power linking 1929 Chicago with a layer of immortal evil. The consequences for the story are inextricably, inextricably linked, uh, a bit of a stutter there, to events in the Doctor's past. The full story is revealed in the first uh, of a series of mystic adventures, which is another uh, virgin book range in itself, uh, and that particular book is called Goth Opera, and it's the first missing adventure, and it's written by um, Paul Cornell, who is a fantastic uh, author, by the way. Um, and I'll just read you this little uh, description here. Uh, Full-length original novels based on the longest-running science fiction t television series of all time, the BBC's Doctor Who. The New Adventures takes the TARDIS into previously unexplored uh, realms of space and time. Terry Sticks is one of the country's most prolific and popular authors. He has written over 60 novels based on Doctor Who, including The New Adventure, Time and Exodus. He was script editor for the television series for five years. And you got a little about um, the pricing there, which is a little bit outdated now because um, a lot of the prices for the Virgin New Adventures uh, vary. Uh, it's quite a long book. It's a little bit longer than your average new series book. Um, it's about 285 pages, so there you go. Um, so it didn't take me very long to read at all, only a few weeks really. Um, I could have read it a little bit quicker, but I was just tired from work, and um, I read a couple of chapters every night uh, from when I got home from work. Um, so what are my overall thoughts and opinions on uh, Blood Harvest, written by Terence Dix? Um, if you're familiar with Terence Dix, Dix's works, then you'll know that he's very sort of reliant on continuity, and a lot of people I find... I found a lot of people that have a bit of a problem with that. They they always com like complaining that Terran Six never writes any original Doctor Who books. He, he always has to base it on um, you know his previous stories. Um, this is a prime example of that. And uh, another example is Shakedown. Um, I'm not sure about Time Worm Exodus. I'm not too sure about that because 
I haven't read uh, that story, so I can't comment on uh, that factor. But I think this is sort of uh, linked uh, partly to uh, State of Decay. Now, I haven't actually seen State of Decay, so it would have made sense for me to actually have watched State of Decay before I read this book. But to be honest, uh, I thought it was like fine without that particular story. It was sort of, I was fairly familiar with State of Decay anyway. I knew of the little history of it. Um, but uh, I, I understand State of Decay is quite a good story. But in this novel, in the story, you've got two particular uh, plots going on. You've got uh, a plot where the Doctor is pretty much uh, an entrepreneur, like a business entrepreneur. He uh, owns like this sort of um, what do you call it, like a, a bar, restaurant, whatever, and uh, he's selling uh, illegal booze, which he's created himself from the TARDIS, and he's selling that out, and uh, he's made quite a quite a fortune on that uh, illegal booze, um, and he keeps the booze stored in the TARDIS uh, swimming pool, uh, believe it or not. And um, there's another plot with uh, Benice, and she's on uh, the planet, I believe, which was featured in Save Decay, because like I said, I haven't... Uh, watch Save Decay, but I, I'm familiar with some of the characters that were in that story, um, I just haven't got round to watching it yet. Um, and uh, she's trying to look for archaeological items to examine and whatever. Uh, like, for example, she finds the uh, the great vampire, the sort of the carcass, and she's wondering, you know, she doesn't know it's the great vampire yet, but she has a bit of an idea of what it could be, and she's trying to uh, take specimens from that and examine it, etc. And she comes across various certain characters, um, such as Ivo, I th who I think was in State of Decay. Um, I'll, have to, I'll, have, I'll have to read up on State of Decay, because it's a story that I do want to watch after, after reading this particular book. Um, and uh, yeah, this it sometimes it's very uh, it can be hard to keep up with the two plots because uh, you think right. So this happened before uh, this particular event in this area uh, in the planet of the vampires, and then you've got the whole um, uh, plot going on with the Doctor and his uh, booze. Um, uh, I think the main villain of this book is very well done, really well. Uh, realised and a, uh, quite a good villain at that. I think he could have been explored a little bit more, uh, but basically he's a vampire who's been going around uh, these two different places, uh, those being the planet and uh, 1929 Chicago, and uh, basically what he's trying to do is pretty much uh, stir up trouble by manipulating uh, events um, and by manipulating certain people to do certain things, uh, which will inevitably create a, a bloodshed um, which is why the book's called The Blood Harvest, because uh, the villain is basically trying to cause havoc in different time zones and planets, um, and it ends up linking everything. It gets to a point where everything becomes so... The stakes are so high that the Doctor actually has to call to Gallifrey uh, to seek assistance from the President. Uh, I think she's called Flavia or something. And um, so she has to. He has to seek, uh, you know, uh, assistance from there, like the president of Gallifrey, uh, so the the villain can be stopped. So there's even a point where the Doctor arrives on Gallifrey, and uh, these like special security force, uh, like a, gr a trio, comes along, and questions the Doctor why he wants to be there. Uh, they knew. They obviously know what he's going to do, uh, but the Doctor refuses to say it, and it gets to a point where they actually start interrogating the Doctor by pretty much torturing him, and it's quite brutal because the Doctor almost dies at one point, and uh, I was wondering if uh, he was actually going to be on the verge of regeneration, but they just pretty much torture him, and uh, of course, uh, as it's the Doctor, you know, um, he doesn't die, obviously, because uh, obviously he's got future incarnations after the Seventh Doctor, so... Um, I think overall it's a really good book. I really like the characters, in particular uh, a character called uh, Mr. Decker, who's, uh, it's weird because in the first sort of, uh, well, in that particular plot, uh, he, we, he's, it's in first person, like Dec um, Decker's point of view, and he pretty much helps out the Doctor and Ace. Uh, him and uh, Ace don't really get along very well, um, sort of in the first half of the book, but uh progressively their relationship starts to build and there's a bit of a sort of like a, you can tell there's a bit of a romantic uh, chemistry bit going on there uh, but uh, of course Ace does leave him in the end um, so which was quite sad to say and uh, he was a great character and uh, I got a little bit confused with all the gangsters like I couldn't 
um, quite remember who was who because there's quite a lot of them and a lot of names to remember. Uh, but overall, it, I thought it was a decent book. I thought it was uh, quite uh, an enjoyable new adventure. And like I said, I think I would have benefited more um, from this if I if I'd have read uh, State of Decay. I mean, watched State of Decay. Sorry. Um, but yeah, it's a good book, and I do recommend it if you uh, have watched State of Decay, obviously. Um, and uh, there's a few uh, references to the Five Doctors. There's even a reference to uh, the Dra a Drashig at one point, which was um, bizarre. So fairly continuity heavy. Uh, but if you're not bothered by that, then sure, go out and buy this. Uh, it's a cheap new adventure to get a hold of, and uh, yeah, it's it's enjoyable. But it's probably not it's not the best uh, story that I've ever read. Um, so I think for a rating, I'd probably give it, I don't know, maybe a f 6 out of 10. That's the average, really. Um, you know, it's it's perfectly passable. And, uh, yeah, if you're a fan of Terrence 6, I highly recommend you uh, pick this one up. So thank you very much for watching this review. Um, I'm not sure what my next book review will be, but, um, yeah, I think I'll leave it for a surprise because I have picked up a couple more books uh, since my last uh, book collection video. Um, so yes, thank you very much for watching and I shall see you soon.